Welcome to Nath's Woodworks. I've been wanting to tackle this for quite some time, and there's really no better time than the present, right? As I'm sure many of you know, having a shop space that doubles as your home storage creates some pretty unique challenges. I'm starting to reclaim my space by constructing an assembly table. The inspiration for my design came from several sources that I've seen over the years, most notably the Ron Paul Gork Bench, and I will be posting a link to his video below. This is the space that I'm fighting with. It's a two-car garage with a step-down ceiling and a 4x4 post in the center. And this is what happens when you share a shop with life. Clutter. I'm aiming to utilize this space more efficiently and give myself some more room to work. Working with SketchUp makes the design portion of this project super easy. After I finished the design, it was on to measuring, and there was a lot of it. Keeping the cut sheets handy, I set about marking the lines on my stock. If you have a drywall square, it makes putting these lines down so much easier. I just had a straight edge, so I would have to mark two lines or three lines to keep it consistent and then mark across the board. The sides are made out of three quarter inch birch plywood and the torsion table, which will be featured in a different video, will be made out of half inch MDF. Sometimes it's just easier to climb on top. Handy tip, you can use the edge of the combination square in your marking pencil to lay down a consistent line without the need for a straight edge sliding across the board. Once all the boards were measured and moved out, I started with the cutting process. All wood is dusty when it's cut, however MDF is exceptionally dusty. So be sure to wear the proper protective equipment while cutting it to avoid getting the particles into your lungs. I ended up fighting with my table saw quite a bit during this build. The fence binds up with the riving knife and ends up causing a lot of issues with the, the edges being clean. It is an inexpensive contractor style saw. The fence is very loose, it doesn't really hold on very well, and I'm constantly having to check and adjust the blade for square to the table, and check for the fence being square to the blade. So as often as I could, I opted to use a straight edge and a circular saw for breaking down the sheet goods. After all of the pieces were cut from the sheet goods, I moved on to cutting the dados for the shelving underneath the table. I didn't quite trust the arbor on my table saw, so I decided to use my radial arm saw for my dado set. Um, it worked out pretty well, it's got a nice fence on it, everything's square, and I can fine tune the depth of the cut. I decided to make multiple passes for each dado to reduce chip out and just relieve stress on the blade. While a radial arm saw is basically an inverted table saw, it has its own safety concerns, the biggest of which is making sure you know which way the blade is rotating. Do not do what I did here, and I left this clip in intentionally to show you that you've got to be careful since the motor is on a swivel and it can go both directions based on how far you need the blade away from the fence. For the longer pieces where the data would have been too far away from the fence or not being able to do it safely with the room that I had, I used a router with a half inch spiral upcut bit and a router guide bushing. 
After those were completed, I cleaned up the edges of the dados with a chisel and used a scrap piece of three-quarter inch plywood as a template for ensuring that I got a tight fit in the dado. I then used the jigsaw to cut out the toe kicks with a combination square, and then I continued cutting the dados for the shelves. Again, I made multiple passes, adjusting the depth to 3 sixteenths of an inch on each dado, especially the ones that have double dados on each side. This will leave enough plywood for the support's integrity so it doesn't just collapse. I used the same method with the router on the slanted shelf dados. Wait for it. Wait for it. This one was a bit trickier to clamp down and get to work, but I got through it. After I removed all the guides and clamps, I cleaned up the data with the chisel where it was necessary, testing again with a piece of plywood scrap for the fit. Now that all the base pieces are completely cut, and fitted with the dados, we can finally start assembling them. So using glue and one and a half inch flathead pocket screws, I started with the center shelf and the two main cross supports that run the depth of the table. And once that center front shelf was in place, I attached the back of that center cove to the shelf. using one and a half inch pocket screws and countersinking the holes. Adding more glue to the top of the shelf and the back support, I added the other cross member and that completes the center section. I then flipped the unit on its side and attached the entire thing to the 4x4 post in the center of the garage. Now being that my garage floor is in no way flat level or square, I was about an eighth of an inch higher on one side than the other, so I just used a block plane to shave it down just a bit and verify that it was level. On to the pocket screws for each side of the supports and shelves. I opted for using glue and pocket screws on this table since it's just shop furniture and I'm not super concerned with being able to see those holes. If it were furniture grade or cabinetry, I would think about using mortise and tenon, dowels, biscuits, or some other type of joinery. Putting this thing together with one person was a challenge to say the least, especially since the shelves are a bit more wide than my reaches to be able to hold things together while trying to fit the shelves at the same time. So if you have a second pair of hands, they will be quite useful. For the bottom shelves on each side, I simply put glue into the dados, inserted the shelf, and then on the inside center divider, I put screws through the opposite side's dado to secure it in place. Now once this side was finished, I completed the other side of the table with the shelves the exact same way, ensuring that each wall support was square to its respective shelves. I just cut it out of the video for time's sake. 
The two front cove shelves got six pocket screws each since they only have one side support that they can be glued into. The toe kick will be underneath it, almost in the center of each shelf, so that will help keep it from falling out. And there we have it. The base for the assembly table is mostly complete. The stop block for the slanted shelf will be added with the torsion table top, and that will be coming in a new video shortly. The designs that I've got for this can be easily modified for a fully square table instead of having the code cut out in the rear like I have. I just decided to use that for storage for my shop vac, and since I had the 4x4 post in the center, it made a good excuse for it. So until next time, make your world a better one. Get out there and build something beautiful.